If you think about the most dangerous lake in the world, what comes to your mind? A lake full of monsters like Loch Ness? A lake with a portal to another dimension? A lake with acid or poisonous jellyfish? It's scary, but none of this is even close to the level of danger that Lake Kivu, located near the city of Gauma in Central Africa, poses. This calm, beautiful lake can lead to one of the most devastating disasters on the planet. But to better understand what exactly is going on here, let's take a look at Mount Niragongo, which is located nearby. It's one of the most active volcanoes in Africa. On May 22, 2021, it began spitting out lava that flowed directly onto the crowded city of Galma. The eruption destroyed many homes. About half a million locals were forced to leave their homes. It was a major humanitarian disaster. But time passed. The crisis softened and the volcano calmed down. It seemed that everything was okay, but then scientists began to worry about something else. This something else turned out to be much more dangerous than an erupting volcano. And it was something that was at the bottom of Lake Kivu. Some people call this lake a geological anomaly because of its composition. Underwater, the lake hides dozens of cubic miles of dissolved carbon dioxide more than 10 cubic miles of methane soaked in toxic hydrogen sulfide. This is an incredibly dangerous and extremely explosive mixture. It's like a giant tank of kerosene the size of the Grand Canyon. At any moment, a spark can occur next to this barrel. In the case of Kivu, this spark may be seismic activity. The eruption of Mount Niragongo could also have triggered the outburst, but the lake stayed calm and the disaster fortunately didn't happen. Let's make a small digression. You probably know what greenhouse gases are. These are water vapor, methane, carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, and others. They stay in the atmosphere, retaining heat coming from the sun. This is something like a glass greenhouse that lets in sunlight, but doesn't allow plants, fruits, and vegetables to heat up. The sun sends a huge amount of heat to our planet. Such energy would burn Earth if it didn't have greenhouse gases. They let the heat pass, but only in a certain amount needed to maintain life. It's difficult to imagine how many greenhouse gases are in the atmosphere. And all these gases come up from below, from the surface of our planet. Now, let's go back to our lake. Scientists say that Kivu holds an amount of gas equal to approximately 5% of the annual greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere. And while these gases help us in the atmosphere, they are dangerous for humans. If they escape from the lake, they will fill the entire surrounding valley. Millions of people, animals, birds, almost all living creatures are at risk. Scientists studying this issue have stated that the Kivu Lake disaster can lead to one of the worst natural humanitarian crises in history. Now, don't panic. Let's find out how we can stop the disaster. Greenhouse gas emissions from the bottom of a lake are a rare geological phenomenon called a limnic eruption. What is it, and how does it differ from a regular volcanic eruption? In some tectonically active regions, volcanic gases seep upward from the depths of our planet. Sometimes they come across some water on their way. In our case, this water is Lake Kivu. This lake is deep, and the water at its bottom and at the surface doesn't mix with seasonal temperature changes. Well. You know how hot air always rises? It's the same with water. When the water is warm at the top and cold at the bottom in summer, it hardly moves. But with the onset of cold weather, the water becomes colder and denser, and winds help mix it up. But in the case of Lake Kivu, there's no such mixing, and the gas coming from the bowels of Earth accumulates at the cold bottom. Besides, the water above is pressing on it with its mass, as a result, gases coming from below accumulate there and cannot escape because of the water pressure. It's like they're capped with a cork. At some point, these gases can explode and fly upward like bubbles in soda. If you shake a closed soda can and then pop it open, the liquid will splash out in a fountain. Any seismic activity can affect Lake Kivu in a similar way. If something relieves that water pressure, the gases can escape too. A landslide, volcanic eruption, earthquake, drought. All of this can disrupt the structure of the lake, and then the fragile balance will break. 
and trigger a catastrophe. So now you know how one of the rarest natural phenomena on Earth works. Fortunately, the lake is stable at the moment and there's no sign of trouble, but the danger remains. So what should we do? Should we accept the fact that toxic gases can fill everything around us at any moment? Fortunately, there's a solution to this problem. All these gases can be extracted. Some smooth pumping can neutralize the threat. No rush, just a slow, calm extraction. And it's already happening. Companies pump methane from the depths of the lake and burn it to generate electricity. It's a valuable natural resource. According to estimates, the lake contains $42 billion worth of methane. So the problem is already being solved. Is it? Many people disagree. On one hand, locals plan to increase electricity production several times, so there will be more work at methane extraction sites. On the other hand, human interference can destroy the lake's structure and trigger the release of all these gases at any moment. So what's the right thing to do? We need to look at other examples. This lake isn't unique, it's just one of the largest. There are also dangerous lakes in Cameroon and in Italy. In 1986, a limnic eruption occurred in Lake Neos in Cameroon. A huge amount of carbon dioxide poisoned the air. It was a terrible disaster, after which people launched a project that could prevent similar events from happening again. In 2001, a team of French engineers lowered a pipe to the bottom of the lake and started pumping gas-filled water, which created a fountain of carbon dioxide. Such a miniature eruption was completely under control. In 2011, scientists added two more pipes, and by 2019, Lake Neos was almost completely free of dissolved carbon dioxide. It seems that the Kivu issue is solved. Yes, it's much larger and contains much more natural gas, but what's the problem with installing numerous pipes there? In fact, everything is much more complicated. Kivu contains much more organic matter. Any lake is a bowl with trillions of microorganisms, and Lake Kivu is a huge feast for them. All the organic substances that the lake contains are eaten by small organisms and processed into methane. In addition, the volcano also produces methane, and this volcanic gas seeps into the lake through underwater rocks. Methane is much more difficult to dissolve in water than carbon dioxide, which means that its concentration accumulates over time. Then, what's the solution? So far, the best option is to carefully pump out methane and carbon dioxide. This means that geologists, physicists, chemists, and engineers must closely monitor the imbalance that occurs in the gas's pressure. You've extracted some methane and the pressure has decreased? Fix this moment and take all calculations into account in your further activity, slowly, carefully, and without any haste. It's important to extract all the gases from the lake. But what if an earthquake or volcanic eruption starts at that moment? It doesn't depend on us anymore. All we can do is monitor seismic sensors, and that's it. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.